This is primary mic for the recording. Camera's the mic, but it, it'll, it'll, it will pick it up if you talk directly to it, but it okay. picks up. Can everyone hear me okay? All right, um, great. Good to see everyone. Welcome. I'm sorry that we are running a little bit late today. That is my fault for getting to bring my computer in. Um, fortunately, I lived close, so popped home, grabbed it, and came back. Um, have some um, exciting news um, overall. Um, we'll get into our financials, um, overall updates for Hacker Dojo. Um, as most of you know, the last few months in particular have been pretty challenging. Maybe the last year for Hacker Dojo has been pretty challenging. Uh, through some tough economic times um, and membership being relatively flat. Um, but we have a couple of updates that we're pretty excited about um, that has us in a better spot than we have been before. I want to reiterate what Bo had mentioned earlier. We are looking for a new treasurer. Unfortunately, our treasurer um, this year. Um, Sorry, can you get your mic on so they can hear you? Yes. Um, so, unfortunately, we did lose our treasurer um, this um, past December. So, we've been a little bit behind on getting the financials updated and all of that. That's normally what the treasurer handles. Um, but I spent the last couple of weeks going through everything um, pretty much up to date today to make sure that we're really clear on where we are financially. Um, because, you know, books can look one way, but until you reconcile all of your accounts and make sure everything's, you know, um, on the up and up you're not really 100% sure where we are. So that is mostly complete, but we do still want a treasurer. Best practice is always have, you know, the person who can write the checks and the person who's monitoring the accounts are not the same person. Um, so we would, uh, that is kind of an urgent need for us. We do really want to fill that position as soon as possible, both because I don't want to be doing the books all the time, um, but also from a governance um, and transparency standpoint, we want to make sure that we have, you know, multiple people that are involved in that. Um, Emily, uh, board, Director, uh, board president is also um, going to be going through and reviewing the books in the interim, um, and that's just you know Hacker Dojo has had some you know troubles in the past, and we always want to prioritize transparency um, and being upfront and making sure that we're doing everything that we can, make sure that um, we are exercising good financial governance. So, um, so this is um, profit and loss statement for year to date. So this is January first to present day. Um, last time we met, we were in a little bit of a challenging situation where we knew that we were a little bit behind on rent and bills and things like that. Uh, we are now fully caught up. Uh, we are very, very fortunate that a donor contributed a half Bitcoin to us um, earlier this month, um, or I guess late last month, earlier this month. That half Bitcoin we were able to cash out when it hit seventy-two thousand um, dollars, or Bitcoin hit seventy-two thousand. So it's about a thirty-five thousand dollar donation. Uh, what that allowed us to do is get fully current on all of our bills and actually build up a little bit of a cash reserve. So I want to temper this uh, with a little bit of caution. Uh, we've done well the last couple of months, and we'll go into a couple of the reasons why. Um, but we're not completely out of the woods yet. We still have a long ways to go before we're really getting back to strong financial positions, but we are in a much better financial spot than we were um, last month. So um, net income on this, and this will go down by about $1,500 or so um, once the final transactions I have to go and reconcile um, get entered in. So we're about $15,000 positive um, net for year to date, and that's being current on all of our um, current expenses and uh, current contractors that we have. Yes? This does include the Bitcoin donation. Um, the other caveat that I have to this is we have a $20,000 invoice coming in tomorrow. So this number is actually, if we go year to date tomorrow, about $35,000. So the good news is year to date, we are roughly at break even, um, which is a lot better than we were last year. Um, and is you know, it's what we've been trying to get at least back to. And now we want to look um, a little bit forward and see how we can get past break even and start really growing again. Um, so the $35,000 gives us a really nice buffer. Uh, we were dealing more with cash flow issues than necessarily, you know, not necessarily being super far behind. Um, and this alleviates some of those immediate challenges. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, and overall, good news. 
Um, so really appreciate everyone that has helped out along the way, donors along the way, um, the small donors, um, large donors, everyone helps out. Um, the donor who contributed to us believes in this community and believes in um, all the people that are here. So when you guys give 10, $20, that's visible to um, the donors that we're talking to. They know that there's a community behind us. People are utilizing our space. So we really appreciate everyone that's donated and support us, whether you're here as a community member, as a guest, or you're a donor, or you're a volunteer. We really, really, really appreciate everyone's involvement and help along the way. Um, so um, overall, membership has been relatively flat um, since really summer. Um, we've seen a lot of reasons for this, and the economic challenges that Silicon Valley and the tech industry going through is a big part of it. Um, we also haven't had someone really dedicated to doing member outreach. Um, so with the extra room that we have, we are looking at bringing on a, um, essentially a community manager role, uh, someone whose job is going to be building and growing membership, doing outreach, Supporting members on a day-to-day -day basis, making sure everyone has you know, everything that they need, is getting the connections that they need, um, and really being a day-to-day -day liaison to support all the members here at Hacker Dojo. Um, so being flat, you know, in some ways, is a little bit of a success. Some of the other hacker spaces, maker spaces I've talked to have seen anywhere from 30 to 60% declines in their memberships, um, particularly those deeply involved in tech. So maker spaces that don't focus on tech, they're doing okay because they haven't been hit by the tech layoffs in the same way. Um, but in general, it's a really challenging time in tech right now. We've had a lot of members who have put their membership on hold um, while they're moving out of the area or are going through um, a new job search, things like that. Uh, so it has been challenging from a membership perspective, um, but we've kept the um, Hive and the dedicated desks full. Um, and we are seeing an increase in our um, yearly revenue. Um, as I mentioned before, we have a couple of caveats to the you know, break even year to date. Uh, there are some seasonality um, incomes that we have. When Hacker Dojo reopened two years ago, they reopened right around this time, February, March. There are a lot of influxes of annual memberships and those renew each year. So we see more annual memberships being paid in January, February, and March than we do for the rest of the year. Um, so we are getting a little bit of a, a revenue boost from that. So we do want to still keep an eye on our month to month um, cash flow because that might be one to $2,000 over our yearly or our um, normal monthly um, revenue. So there's some good news, some bad news mixed together. Um, but the overall good news is that we are on a much better track financially than we have been, um, you know, really looking like for the last, um, you know, really the last year. Um, but the last three months have been particularly good. Uh, Tiana has done a great job of bringing in um, a lot of new events and hackathons and things like that. And some of those generate revenue for Hacker Dojo as well. Um, and then the summit program that we've been doing is a big contributor to this as well. Summit um, Public Charter School is very interested in renewing for next year, so we anticipate that that will be a um, ongoing program that we are doing. Any questions about the membership or uh, current revenue? So it was our second best revenue um, uh, month, last month, um, in the last calendar year. So um, again, a lot of appreciation to uh, Tiana, who's helped bring in a lot of new events and um, some of the other youth programs that we've done have contributed to that. So um, good news on that front. We have two hackathons at the end of the month. Uh, once tentative, okay. We'll talk about some of the upcoming events um, as well. Um, any questions? Okay. Um, so, as a high level financial summary, um, the $35,000 donation um, allowed us to come current on all of our bills and restore a cash buffer for us. Um, so, um, and then as I mentioned earlier, the summit payment will be arriving on Thursday. Um, and so that gets us at about a $35,000 net positive year to date. Um, those numbers again, I'm still doing the last reconciliation, so it is going to change a little bit. 
but we are getting pretty close to um, that break-even point. Um, we have a couple of hackathons, um, as I mentioned, uh, scheduled for the end of April, um, and a number more scheduled that we're scheduling right now throughout the summer. Um, so we're really excited about getting those published, and um, those events actually help bring in a lot of revenue through um, sponsors and things like that. So we're always excited when we um, have a company sponsoring a hackathon here at Hacker Dojo. Uh, we also started attending the electronics flea market. Um, if you have electronics that you want to donate to that monthly effort um, to support Hacker Dojo, the proceeds from those do go to support um, Hacker Dojo. Um, so that is the second Sunday of each month, Bo? It'll be the third Sunday this coming month and otherwise second Sunday. Okay, yeah, third Sunday this coming month. I will announce that um, if you follow our meetup, um, you can see um, that as well. So if you want to come out and support us, um, if you have electronics that you want to sell and get rid of um, and want to donate those to Hacker Dojo, we can take them out there and bring in a little bit um, extra money for the dojo. We're also getting really good contacts for people who want to come and attend our events. That hasn't translated to memberships just yet, um, but we all know that getting someone in the door the first time is the biggest challenge. Uh, so we're making a lot of really um, good contacts, meeting new people there as well. Um, and then we have a couple more um, private paid events um, that we are in discussion um, with. Um, based on the feedback that we got about T-Mobile a couple months back, we are being um, a little bit more careful about how um, we are setting those up and making sure that we aren't going to have a situation where it might be a little bit noisy or disruptive um, when we can avoid it. Um, overall, setting aside that we have a couple of um, annual memberships, a couple more than normal in January, February, March timeframe, um, our monthly burn rate is down to about 1000 um, maybe as high as $2,000 a month um, on average. Um, when I started, we were about $10,000 a month monthly burn rate. So we've come a long way, and um, again, this is excluding the partial Bitcoin donation. Um, so we're getting really, really close to that break-even point, um, and particularly as we start doing some of our summer programs, we expect that we'll um, get back into cash flow positive territory without donations um, being factored into that. Any questions about this? All right. Um, some overall updates. We just finished um, round three of the summit program. We are starting started round four this week. Um, so our next you know, lump sum from that will be hitting in mid-May. Um, and because this is a shorter se session and it's the end of the year payment, that'll also contribute towards our cash reserves at that time as well. So it's been a really successful program. The kids are really excited about everything that they've done. And I think we've got a couple of budding entrepreneurs uh, coming through the program that will probably end up here once they've graduated high school. Um, so it's been a really great program um, and really appreciate our instructors um, who have helped out with that um, along the way. Our next volunteer day is April 21st. That is this coming Saturday or Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, I believe. Yeah, this coming Sunday. Um, we are going to be prioritizing, um, I believe, painting Kaminsky, doing a little bit more cleanup and organization. We've got some new pegboard going up in the electronics lab. There'll also be some going up in the laser lab. We want to bring a little bit more organization and cleanliness um, to the space. Um, so we can really use your help as members, making sure that the areas that you're working in um, and the areas around you are getting cleaned up at the end of the day. Don't leave things here overnight. Um, we know it's you know kind of a pain to pack things in, take them home, bring them back. Um, but it does you know, really contribute to the place looking a little bit more cluttered, uh, which can be a little bit off-putting pe to people when they're touring through. So we just want to be sure that as a community, we're taking care of our shared communal space as best we can. Um, really appreciate some of the volunteers who have gone above and beyond helping keep things clean and organized. Benita, in particular, has really kept the front desk area um, really, really clean. It's been really consistent about helping with the dishwasher, things like that. But I encourage all members to really pitch in and help with things like that. If you see a mess on a table, you know, grab a rag, wipe the table down, help keep that clean. It is a community space. Messes happen, 
Um, so we always try and clean up as best we can. So encourage members to be actively engaged in that. Um, we, for those of you who are familiar with open source, we are going to be applying to open source. Um, happens in June. Open source is kind of a convention for you content creator makers um, and tech enthusiasts. Uh, so that's going to be a really exciting event it's held up in San Francisco. If you would like to be involved in planning and going to that program, supporting our booth, please reach out to Tiana, Bo, or myself, um, and we'll get you involved and let you know let you know what we're looking at doing. Um, we've been talking with Google um, and CBRE about a potential new location. No update on that. Um, they're pretty busy right now. Um, and so I pinged them again recently to get an update, but they're still looking through their portfolio for a good fit for us. So still interested, um, but haven't found the right building yet. Um, and then we um, are looking at a partnership with a um, education, a tech education organization um, that supports um, entrepreneurs and students in Nigeria. Um, they are working on bringing students to Silicon Valley to experience what this area is like um, and get some exposure um, to technology, innovation, some of the major companies in the area. Uh, so we are looking, um, exploring a partnership with them to really you know, bring the world to Silicon Valley and share this incredible community, this great space we have, and the connections that we have within Silicon Valley. So we're pretty excited about that. Relatively early uh, discussion, um, but you know, it's an exciting program that we think, you know, going towards the future can have some really good things. Any questions on this slide? All right. Again, if you have questions at any point, raise your hand. Um, we want this to be a dialogue as much as possible. Um, oh, quick reminder, we are going to do a barbecue after this evening's meeting. So about 6.30, 7 o'clock, uh, we'll be firing up the barbecue. Invite all of you to come back, um, have some hot dogs, hamburgers, and whatever we end up cooking. Right. Um, and then we discussed the, um, finally have a dialed in 2024 budget as part of um, getting all the transactions reconciled, knowing really where we're starting from. Um, so we approved our budget last night um, in the preliminary form. Uh, we'll get that published out um, as well. So if you want to see what our yearly budget looks like, um, you're more than welcome to take a look at that. So I'll um, follow up with a link to um, the short form budget um, without all of our complicated calculations and um, pivot tables and everything else that goes towards feeding the end numbers. Um, so if you're interested in looking into where we're getting our revenue, where we're spending our money, um, happy we'll get that published out um, in the next couple of days um, so that anyone who wants to can review it. If you have any questions at any point about us as an organization, I always really encourage reaching out to us. Um, we try very, very hard to not be in an ivory tower and not isolate um, what's going on. Um, I will always try and be transparent and upfront. You know, when we're having financial struggles, you know, the last couple of months we've been really honest about that. We're excited that that, at least in the short term, is a little bit alleviated. Um, so we share our wins and our losses. Um, so please do feel free to reach out to myself, uh, Tiana, any of our board members. If you have questions, feedback, comments, things that you want fixed, things that are frustrating for you, uh, we want to hear your feedback. So that's all that I've got, was trying to keep it under 30 minutes. So we've got three minutes for questions before I fail my personal goal. No questions at all. <coughs> <laughs> Make a quick event plug. Oh yeah, um, event plug. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so just wanna mention we're rebooting the lightning talks. So myself and Nicole, uh, we'll be co-hosting the next two. So we'll be uh, doing one coming up next Friday. We'll kind of be shoehorning it in before the mix and pitch. And if the weather's like this, we'll meet out on the front lawn and uh, aim to have uh, some food and barbecue going as well. And then mix and pitch will start at seven. 
And then next month, we'll be doing it on Friday the 10th as well. So if anybody would like to present, has questions, or want to host, and then we'll look to have that being the uh, third Friday of the month. Nixon Pitch is usually the fourth Friday, I believe, so we'll be the week before. That's it. Cool. All right. Um, other events coming up, I mentioned the hackathon. I believe that just got posted. Tiana, posting it right now. Uh, so we just locked that in last night. Um, so we have a hackathon um, potentially to the last weekend of April, so 27th, 28th. I think the 27th is the one that is locked in. Yeah. Cool. Um, so 27th, um, keep your calendars free. It looks like a really fun event. Um, and then potentially keep your calendars free on the 28th as well. Uh, we are hoping that um, that will, or is that the high school hackathon? 28th? Okay, to be determined. Um, if you aren't following us on Meetup already, please do, um, as well as following us on social media. One of the other ways that you can help Hacker Dojo in a really meaningful way is sharing our events. We're gonna be setting up a weekly digest of events, so you can share one post that has most of the stuff that's going on at Hacker Dojo, um, instead of you know, sharing a bunch of smaller events. Um, you have networks and connections that we don't have. And there's a lot of people within your networks that might find Hacker Dojo a really helpful and fun place to come and visit for events as a member, um, as a volunteer, whatever it may be. So please, um, when you see events, if you can share them, uh, share what's going on here, let your friends know, um, invite them out to game nights, invite them out to our mix and pitch, lightning talks, whatever it may be. Um, you know, we really appreciate you know, you guys helping support Hacker Dojo by spreading the word about what we're doing here. Um, and more people here makes the entire um, organization a lot more fun. Um, it's always more fun when we've got our friends and family around, um, sometimes family around. Um, but really appreciate um, some people who have gone above and beyond to um, highlight our events and brought in a lot of new faces. Um, Jorge's great about um, sharing our events when they get published um, and really appreciate the groups that he has brought. Um, you know, a lot of new faces and we're always happy to see those. So that's all that I've got. Um, thank you everyone for coming out and sharing a half hour with us. Um, glad that this month we have a little bit of good news to share um, and you know, look forward to continuing to build off of this momentum. and. You know, things getting you know, brighter and brighter in the future. Thanks, everyone.